Welcome, Black here from Castle Black Gaming, and this is a review for the Consolidated Outland Nomad Space Truck. My reviews are meant to be packed with tons of info given at my normal no time wasting format. If you like what I do then please do all the things to help and also consider joining our discord for more hands on help or to join our brand new org where we are hoping to build a like minded community of profiteers who also enjoy doing some stuff together. Now with the intro out of the way let's get to it. Alright so first here on the screen are the stats for the ship. The Nomad fills the role of light freighter with a very capable truck bed, for lack of a better term for it, that's open to the elements and atmosphere. Its weapon complement is 3 gun hardpoint, sporting size 3 slots, which is a nice bit of damage for a ship this size, and the weapons are positioned in the center of the ship, which is also nice if wing damage happens, meaning you won't lose your weapons if that occurs. There are 2 missile racks that each support 4 size 2 missiles, giving you a total of 8 missiles, which is also not bad, but keep in mind that these missile racks are locked into place and not something you can downgrade for more smaller sized missiles. The ship dimensions are 27 meters in length, 19 meters in width, and 10 meters high, giving it a very cramped feel but still a cool and ergonomical design with what appears to be careful thought into the used space, especially indoors. Now as for the components, the ship has 3 size 1 shields which is different for a ship this size. It also has 2 size 1 coolers, 1 size 1 power plant, and 1 size 1 quantum drive. The ship has 16 thrusters for thrust and maneuverability, and 2 size 1 hydrogen fuel tanks and 1 size 1 quantum fuel tank, which means fuel is going to be a little bit of a problem when traveling across this system, which is why instead of one of the grade A quantum engines, I suggest using the burst, which will still get around at a decent rate and leave some fuel in the tank for you. Alright, as stated briefly before, the living accommodations for a ship of this size and price point is quite extraordinary, and this ship certainly feels like one you could live in with a bed and kitchen included in the design. The ship should allow for some cool short distance travels without ever having to stay over anywhere else if that is what you'll be going for, which with the cargo bed should make for some long days out in the verse doing work without having to rely on civilization for comforts. There are currently 5 paint jobs on the RSI store you can purchase for the Nomad and the colors range from orange to black to a lime green which looks incredible and something I would pick up if this ship is something you own and enjoy flying. The Nomad's role is that of a light freighter, with an open bed in the back of the ship that is only accessible from outside at the rear of the ship, and with this bed you can haul cargo as well as a rock mining vehicle, which makes this the cheapest vehicle you can own that allows for carrying that rock vehicle. Now with the economical living quarters inside, the vehicle also acts as a habitation for citizens. The vehicle will also have a size 1 tractor beam that will hopefully be added shortly after the new cargo refactor coming in the fall of 2022 which will make transporting cargo on and off the ship easier. Even though 24 SEU of storage is not a whole lot in terms of hauling, it is enough to get a new player started and learning how trade works, so it also has that going for it as well. Currently the Nomad is equipped to handle mining with a rock, cargo, bounty hunting, and trading which are all good gameplay loops that offer up decent money making schemes, especially for a new player looking to get started in the verse. The ship is not really missing any of its features except the tractor beam, which is not really a huge deal at the moment and until we see tractor beams in action, which will probably be early next year at the earliest, it's still unclear on how much of an enriched feature that will be, especially those mounted on ships. Now with physicalized cargo coming in 318 in just a few months, there might be some additional use as a trader the Nomad might be good for once we're having to unload cargo by hand, but again that remains to be seen and with the cargo storage being relatively small anyway, we probably won't see many people using this ship for trading. Another gameplay loop I will mention here is hauling items for events like Jump Town, which I've heard many people not using it for that since the open air cargo haul pretty much makes it a hard target for those looking to steal your cargo easily so it's not not advised to utilize the ship for that event to put things in the back. 
Now the Nomad comes stock with gimbaled Badger laser repeaters, and while these are good for beginners, if you're a decent flyer and have moved on from gimbaled weapons to those that are forward shooting so you can utilize the larger size guns for more firepower, you'll be wanting to buy three of the CF-337 Panthers which will run you around 25 to 30k. Now upgrading your missiles to eight of the Electro Mags will tack on another thousand or so. Then the Quantum Drive is one you will need to upgrade so there is another 13,000. Now this ship comes with three shields so when you upgrade those that's a hefty sum of almost 60,000 just in shields additional and with the power plant you're looking at around 119,190 credits which isn't bad as much as some but a little bit more than some of the starter ships. Now this is without the coolers because as my loadout videos state, the coolers are not currently needed in their current state until a ship components revamp is done. Now if you want the coolers anyway, your new total is up on the screen. Again, those are optional. With these upgrades, you will make the Nomad formidable for those trying to mess with you if you get pulled out of Quantum by NPCs and bounties should also go pretty smoothly for the first few bounty tiers. For more info on this ship and which components I recommend, make sure you check out my Nomad loadout video. The link will be at the end of this video. Alright, so the first half of this video has been mostly facts. Now we come to the part where it's more subjective and although I try not to really push my opinion too much on others, I will give my honest hot take coming from a reasonable place trying to avoid hyping things just for the sake of hype. The Nomad, in my eyes, is an absolute stunning ship. It reminds me of Origami, only not as fragile. This ship does not look fragile and actually reminds me of more of a Taco Bell Crunch Wrap, which is a pretty solid wrap that does not fall apart like burritos do. Do. Food analogies aside though, I think the ship both inside and out is unique and I've always been in awe when I see one show up while I'm out in the verse and I wish Consolidated Outland made more ships, but I must mention that in my mind I just cannot get over the open bed on a space vehicle. It sort of works for hauling the rock around and makes sense there, but as soon as you lift off through the atmosphere I just cannot suspend the believability of anything in that bed not burning up or flying out because it's unprotected. If this were just a lower end Atmo vehicle, that never left the planet, I'd be on board with this design. And even though this is just a game where some things cannot be realistic, I just prefer my ships to be more grounded in reality, especially when it comes to storage. I know the whole series ships will have things exposed, but they will also be tied down and secure versus me tossing in three packages for a cargo mission and they are supposed to be remaining there in place and without harm of any sort or using any kind of special containers. I'm sure this change at a later time will come, but still it just throws me off and prevents me from 100% liking this ship. Alright, but is the ship fun? I enjoy using the ship to fly about in. It's great for cruising to and fro and to take care of minor cargo missions and with its 40 second claim time it's a good little flyer to have. That's about where my fun ends though as I did not enjoy doing rock mining with it as opposed to something more enclosed with a larger cargo space. I know it is the cheapest rock hauler there is and while I respect its price point it was just not a ship I would own for this purpose. I've seen comments from players who love being able to just land just right to where they're next to the ore and having the rock hang out the back of the ship and just mining from there but I actually like driving the rock on and off the ship and parking or whatnot so in that regard it was not something I enjoyed doing as much. The ship handles well and while I think the hover landing is also a cool idea on paper it just seemed to handle weird while landing at times especially on rocky terrain and I'd rather see my landing gear planted on the ground instead of slightly hovering since there are so many bugs in the game already with collision and clipping it was just hard to tell at times if I had a good stable landing spot. Okay. Well for the price, whether you pay with real money or not, you get quite a cool little ship with a lot of features packed in, some of which not even the larger Drake Cutlass series has going for it, but still it is just not a ship I would buy whether with real money or not. I know that's a very unpopular opinion and it's not that I'm not recommending others to buy it because for under a million AUEC it does get players who have not experienced having a cargo big enough to handle a rock that opportunity. But then again as a new player, will you be able to work around the tight fit of the rock inside of the Nomad. I for one think that for the extra 400k the Drake Cutlass Black is the better buy and even with real money the extra 20 or so dollars is just a good investment on convenience and ease of use and although I respect the layout of the Nomad and the design, I prefer the openness of the Cutlass Black more so I'm leaving this decision up to the viewer on what fits their grind style and budget needs but I wanted to share my own personal thoughts and reasoning on why I personally would not buy this ship.
So that's going to do it for this ship review of the consolidated Outland Nomad. I promised that I would not hold back on my actual thoughts and opinions when doing reviews and while overall I think the Nomad is a great addition to the fleet, I just cannot get over some of my own reservations about its open air bed and the size of it for doing rock mining. Again, these are my own thoughts and I look forward to hearing from you all telling me why I'm wrong and how the Cuddy Black is a hot mess dumpster fire, but please do so respectfully as I have been respectful to you guys and your opinion and who knows, maybe you can switch me over to the Nomad Club. Now remember to be kind to your fellow gamer, always secure your cargo while traveling, and stay positive citizens.